it's finally time to talk about my favorite romance books. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Now for today's video, I'm going to be talking about my favorite romance books that I read this year. Now, 2020 was one of the best reading years that I've had since I've taken part of the Goodreads Challenge since 2015. In 2020, I've read over 600 books, mainly contributed because we were in a pandemic, baby, and because I was listening to audiobooks a lot during work. I think like the most number of audiobooks I was able to crush through was three full-length audiobooks that are were nine hours and above and honestly it was a great time for me and this year I've read a lot and I've narrowed down the 10 to 15 books that I think that you should read too as well so let's get started. So the first book that I want to talk about is actually a book that I've already talked about in many of my videos. Now if you've been subscribed to me for a long time and you've been watching my videos you probably have seen some of these titles being spoken about and being talked about in my other videos but this one is one of my favorites and I'm sorry if it seems a little bit redundant but this one is called The Love Scam by Mary Janice Davidson and now this one has a rocky rating on Goodreads. It doesn't really have the highest rating as one would expect. It actually started off with like maybe two and a half stars um, on Goodreads when the net galleys were out and when the E arcs were out and also when the physical arcs were out and mostly contributed because the editing was really bad. It wasn't you know finished editing yet. There was a lot of formatting in it that broke up the story a lot that made you not appreciate the story as much. But if you persevered through it and you actually read the arc, then you would know that this story is a solid one and something that you should definitely pick up if you're looking for a feel good novel. Now this book follows a character named Rake. Basically Rake is a millionaire and he's really wealthy. He comes from a wealthy background and he's living the life back in America. Um, he parties all night and he has his fair share of girls and he just likes to have fun with it. But what happens when one day he parties a little too hard and then he wakes up in Italy and he finds himself in this very nice Italian hotel and he's confused as where he is. He just knows that he has a really bad headache and he lost his wallet. So now he has no phone and he can't even contact anyone in America to come rescue him. And now he finds himself at the mercy of this girl named Claire who actually rescues him after Rake stumbles into a canal and falls into the dirty waters. And now Rake actually has to do things that Claire tell him to do so that he can actually have a roof over his head and he has food in his belly and he's completely at her mercy and this book also follows the plot line of her him trying to figure out how he got to Italy in the first place how he's going to get himself out of this mess and also the little girl that Claire is holding on to just so happens to be his daughter and now he's completely freaking out now because he might be a single father and he has no idea who the mother is this one was so fun it had a mystery element to it um, it made me feel like I was in Italy at the time when I was reading this during quarantine and I really wanted to travel. It definitely gave me wonderlust and it was a feel-good novel towards the end as well. So the next book that I want to talk about is actually a South Asian romance and it's actually from Sajini Patel. This one's called The Trouble with Hating You. I'm not sure if this is actually her debut novel but I think it is and this one follows two characters named Leah and Jay and basically Leah is a very strong independent woman. She has built her own kind of like career where she rose to the top and she does not care for opinions of males um, who are looking down at her simply because she is an intelligent female. She likes to make money and she likes to flaunt it. So if you guys like characters who are fabulous and basically a boss lady, then definitely pick up this book just for Aaliyah. Um, in the first couple of chapters of this book, I was kind of turned off by the fact that she kept flaunting the fact that she was wearing Louboutins and Chanel and all these brand name items. But then I quickly realized the girl empowerment that she was trying to exude and that she was just trying to like make everybody kind of know that she is a successful lady and she just loves her shoes. So this is the story of Leah kind of having to go through her parents um, telling her that she needs to get married because she is turning in the older later 20s and then in South Asian culture she's supposed to be married now you know she needs to follow that kind of tradition uh, get married settle down and start a family and things like that. Leah doesn't want any part of that because she just wants to have her career and kind of just grow into her own skin and things like that and then meanwhile Jay is actually the person that Leah is set up with but Leah doesn't want any part of that so she actually bumps into him as she She's running out of her house and Jay is immediately insulted by the fact that Leah is so childish that instead of 
declining a date with him that she would just run off and everything like that. So this book follows a lot of office enemies to lovers as well because Leah and Jay actually work together in the same office trying to save the same company that they work for and also because they had that really nasty um, first meeting. And then this book also has severe trigger warnings I would like to say. It includes a lot of sexual assault and if you guys are sensitive around the topics of sexual assault and trauma then definitely don't pick this book up. But this book was something that I could finish and something that I could stomach and I really liked how they talked about the South Asian culture and how you have to respect your elders and then also how like there's lies and deceit that follows through with any family. So definitely go check this one out if you're looking for something dramatic but also feminist and also romantic. So I think the next book a lot of people have included in their favorites list and it's you know a no wonder it's a no-brainer actually because it has four star rating and it has over a hundred thousand ratings on Goodreads. It's definitely one of the biggest readings that debuted this year or that like came out this year because our author Emily Henry has actually written a lot of novels before Beach Read. This one just kind of like shot her into stardom I think and everybody just fell in love with her uh, romance and her fiction story uh, featuring two characters named Augustus and January. Augustus is a literary fiction author and January is a romance author so they are complete two opposites and they also have a very two different personalities where Augustus is kind of more serious kind of at times and January is more into, you know, writing a nice novel with a sweet ending and giving a happy ending to her readers and things like that. So both of them have very difficult backgrounds and they also have difficult issues that they have to overcome in this book. But when they go to their kind of like respective beach houses kind of slash cottage houses uh, near the near the waters or whatever, I don't know how you call it, but maybe their cabins, um, they actually are neighbors and they have an enemies to lovers romance where they have this amazing bickering session all the time and they actually challenge each other to write each other's um, genres. So in Augustus's book he has to include a romance in it and then in January's book she has to include a literary fiction novel kind of uh, take on it as well and then they have a challenge to see who can write the best book and then who can actually kind of sign on with a contract and things like this. I read this book way earlier than its release because I thought that this was just going to be another Berkeley romance sensation that you know a lot of people will read in the romance community but not a lot of people will actually read outside of it but this one actually was marketed less romance and thus a lot of people actually got exposed to this title which I'm very glad for because this book was amazing. It was super funny. I really enjoyed it and I thought that their emotional backgrounds were something that was very painful and definitely hard to get over. But I really appreciated these characters' backgrounds because it gave another layer to them and it shaped them to be more realistic. So I've talked about a lot of popular authors, but now I'm going to switch into the kind of the indie authors and also authors that are not being publicized as much here on Booktube and also in the book community. The next book that I want to talk about that is one of my favorites is actually a book circled around donuts. So this one's called Donut Disturbed by Melissa Williams and Melissa Williams is is actually a Canadian author. This book has less than 300 ratings on Goodreads and it's also available on Kindle Unlimited. So if this one sounds something uh, that you would like, I definitely recommend you to check it out and support this small author. This book features a character named Cassidy. Cassidy is a baker. She really enjoys making donuts and she actually has her own little kitchen set up in her home because what happens is that the bakery that she and her brother actually operate is flooded and she has to fulfill this donut order um, very soon so she decides to just start baking donuts in the middle of the night. Her next door neighbor is named Baxter and Baxter is actually a cop so then now the cop and donuts thing kind of match and this is kind of like their nice little play on it from Melissa um, and this is kind of their love story. I thought it was very cute, it was very light-hearted and it was very fun. At first I thought it was going to be kind of like an enemies to lovers romance because they were bickering back and forth over how she's making a lot of noise and she's singing at the top of her lungs while making these donuts but then afterwards they were very flirty with each other and they took care of each other and when a little bit of danger kind of came and hit, Baxter kind of came and saved the day and I just really love this couple. I thought it was just such a sweet fun romance that you could probably zip through in like a couple of hours. So continuing on with our indie romances and an author that a lot of people don't talk about and this book having only a thousand ratings here on Goodreads. Uh, this book is called Man Crush Monday by Christy Mosley and now this one is a book that features the trope of offices attract. Our main heroine is very vibrant and very out 
outrageous kind of way she expresses uh, her emotions and she expresses her personality through her looks so she likes to dress really nicely she likes to dye her hair and she's that kind of fun character um, she also works as kind of like a person on the trains so if you were familiar with public transportation you know that if you take the morning train there is kind of a person that kind of checks your tickets make sure that you actually paid and um, things like that and actually provide you like service and answers and to questions that you may have about the train schedule I don't know how to describe this job it's not part of the story but what happens is that our main character is actually named Amy and Amy actually has a crush on one of the fellow passengers on her train every day he takes the same train and every day she has that shift and she always sees him so she romanticizes that she's going to one day walk up to him introduce herself and they're gonna fall in love and they're gonna get married and they're gonna have babies all from the single encounters that she has seen of him all through the conversations that she has overheard that he have with other passengers she completely fell in love with him for this very stoic and tall dark and handsome guy that is kind of like the opposite of her because instead of uh, openly expressing himself and things like that he's kind of a little bit more awkward and he's a little bit more closed off and things like that so when they finally actually have a chance to have a conversation and actually meet this is kind of their love story of how they're gonna overcome their differences and properly fall in love after getting to know each other so following along with my indie romance recs I'm going to recommend book two in this series called the slice series by Tegan Hunter and it's called I need you tonight and this one follows the theme of kind of pizza like as you can tell from the whole series our main our one of our main characters actually owns a pizza restaurant like it's a family pizza restaurant and then our main character in book number two works at the pizza restaurant she's a single mom basically what happened is that she had a boyfriend that was kind of flaky she got pregnant and the boyfriend dipped and ran out so she is left to take care of herself and also to take care of this toddler while also living on like waitresses wages with and salaries which is not a lot so she's kind of constantly always struggling and she has this love to hate relationship with um our main characters from our first books brother who seems like he's a total waste man and if you don't know what a waste man is is basically he doesn't seem like he has anything going on in his life he doesn't have a proper job and he is addicted to smoking marijuana and getting high and just not really being responsible and being a person of integrity I guess if you want to paint him like this but basically when I first read the series I actually didn't like our main character Winston I thought that he was annoying and then I thought that you know there's something wrong with him because he's like very moody Moody and he was acting like a moody brat and a teenager so I didn't think that he was going to be a likable hero and so I was on the team of our main female character named Drew and I was on her side because I was like Drew hates him and I agree because he doesn't seem like he's getting his stuff together but what I learned from I Need You Tonight is that you can't judge a book by its cover and you can't judge a character by its you know third person descriptions because what really happened is that I fell in love with Winston. I definitely fell in love with his dark backstory and I realized that the way he is is because of his past circumstances and it made me completely fall in love with him and Drew together and I really like this opposites attract enemies to lovers romance and if you guys want kind of like a single mom romance too definitely check this one out. So the next book that I want to recommend to you is actually a novella. This one's from one of my favorite indie romance novella authors called Lucy Darling and basically she writes short length novels but in novella form so she's able to create a lot of emotion and also give you like a full plot line and you know beginning middle and end um all in this like 100 pager book and it really impresses you so this one was one of my favorites It's called love on the line this follows a character named Mia and Mia works for a collection agency and she just needs to collect money because if she doesn't collect money she's going to lose her job and what happens is that she's assigned to collect money from this very wealthy businessman who has ordered a shit ton of lingerie and now she's confused because she's like why is this you know really rich guy not paying back for all this lingerie that he can probably buy the whole company so you know Mia's persistent and Mia keeps calling Mr. Kennedy who is our main hero named Max and Max enjoys this conversation because he's absolutely smitten with the fact that Mia is so persistent and also that Mia has a very seductive voice so they kind of have this kind of conversation going day in day out on the phone lines and then they finally agree to meet with each other and that's where sparks kind of fly and their romance actually develops so if you guys are looking for a quirky romantic novella like this one definitely check it out so the next book that I want to talk about is actually a traditionally published romance and this one doesn't have the highest ratings once again um I, there's like this thing that goes on where people say that I like low rated 
books but honestly I can justify why I like them. So this book is called No Offense and it's actually book two in the Little Bridge Island series from Meg Cabot and now this one follows two characters named Molly and John and now Molly recently broke off her engagement and she just wants to you know be independent for a while. She wants to be a single lady so she travels to this island called Little Bridge Island and she actually becomes a librarian at the library. She wants to promote reading and she wants to promote literacy. She wants to have the children kind of always go to the library for resources and she's very supportive of the community like that. John is a sheriff in the town. He's very different from Molly in the sense that he's very gruff. He doesn't want to express himself a lot and he couldn't really care less that you know people aren't reading books and things like that as long as everybody's safe in their homes. So what happens when Molly kind of finds a baby abandoned in the library's like washroom, Molly has to call for John's help and John kind of comes and immediately instead of thinking about you know how the mom is doing, he's immediately thinking about the crimes and punishment that the mom has to go through because of how irresponsible she was to just leave a baby in a public washroom. And then Molly wants to defend the mom because she thinks that you know there could be other factors in the story of why she had to leave her child behind and this is kind of like this offices attract two stubborn people getting together and um, trying to figure out this unsolved mystery of where the mom is and what is actually happening because there is um, a story going along that there is actually a gang in the town that is going to cause a lot of trouble and things like that and then also this character John is actually an older male he's actually in his mid 40s I believe and then Molly is kind of in her mid 30s so this is kind of like an older romance but it it's still hot it's still it's still good it's still juicy John is just a more mature man and he has a teenage daughter to protect now and it's just a fun mystery and hot romantic novel that I can't recommend you to read enough if you want something light. So the next book that I want to recommend to you is actually another book if you want to travel around the world and if you're having a little bit of a wonderless situation now that we're in a pandemic and we're kind of stuck behind our borders but this book is called Paris is Always a Good Idea by Jen McKinley and now this book was actually released this year but I don't feel like a lot of people actually talk about it but it has a fair amount of ratings now on Goodreads it has around 2,800 ratings so that's not too bad for a Berkeley romance. Um, this book follows a character named Chelsea and Chelsea's kind of very torn up about like love. She doesn't really want to have a relationship anymore. She's kind of hurt because she has a backstory to her and her backstory is that basically her mom passed away from cancer around two years ago and she's still kind of dealing with the grief even though she doesn't know it yet. Um, so she decides to work for the American Cancer Coalition where she is an event organizer and she wants to um, basically raise enough money to kind of support the research for cancer research. Um, and she works alongside her office enemy named Jason and Jason and Chelsea are always competing head to head with each other. They are always giving snide remarks to each other and they always want to be the best in front of their boss. But what happens when Chelsea's father is actually engaged to a woman that, you know, she has barely like been dating. I think they've been only dating for a couple months and Chelsea actually doesn't believe that the father is in love with her and it's just lust. Um, so Chelsea has turned into this very cold character that doesn't believe that love exists. So her father challenges her and she decides to go backpacking and go back to the three countries that she visited during her university gap year and um, she goes back to those three countries to meet those three guys that she had a thing with and the three countries is actually Ireland, France, and Italy. So if you want to travel to those three places, just pick up this book. Because of the way that the author describes these places, it makes me want to really wish this pandemic was over so that I can finally go on vacation. But anyways, this one was such a sweet office enemies to lovers romance and I highly recommend you check it out if you like the hating game. Um, this one had less hate than the hating game, but definitely very sweet and very soft. So the next book that I read that I really enjoyed is actually a book that I've been putting off for so many years now, probably ever since it actually got published back in 2000. 2018. So this book is called A Princess in Theory by Alyssa Cole and it's been so long since I've read this book but basically hopefully I pronounced the names right. But it follows two characters named Naledi and also Thabaso and basically Naledi works in America and she works as a waitress but she's also a very brilliant scientist and she is always in the lab studying like molecular structure and biology and things like that and she's really smart she's really bright but she just needs this waitressing job to support her rent and to also pay for her college and to pay for her tuition and things like that. So Naledi is 
obviously annoyed when she reads emails telling her that she is the long lost princess and she needs to return back to a country that she hasn't ever heard of. So she just laughs it off and starts deleting these emails and things like that. But that's not until, you know, she goes to work and then she is stopped by this very intimidating but also very good looking man who claims to be actually the prince. And now he is ready to take her home back to the small country that he rules so that they can officially get married and that they can have their life together ruling over this country. Country. And this country also has this epidemic thing going on where there is an illness spreading and is causing a lot of people to be sick. And then um, we can see that these two people are struggling with, you know, trying to rule a country, trying to take care of the people in the country and also realizing that they may have been falling in love with each other all along. So the next book that I want to talk about is actually a book that I've reread and the last time I read this book was probably back when I was in high school, maybe middle school, I'm not too sure. But this book is called Practice Makes Perfect by Julie James and this one is a legal romance. This one follows two characters named Peyton and JD and this is an office enemies to lovers romance once again. Freaking adore this genre. But basically what happens is that Peyton and JD are put up against each other to kind of fight for partnership and then um, there's an unspoken rule in the firm that if you don't make it to partnership but you're like kind of nominated to go into partnership and you'll be ex extremely embarrassed so you'll actually be you know force yourself to turn in your notice and actually leave the firm as a result. So this is literally two people fighting for their jobs and trying to keep their jobs as well as proving to each other that they are a very good lawyer. And this one was filled with a lot of hilarious pranks that Peyton and JD were doing to each other. It was like not that harmful but it was funny and it also had like a very hot sexual attention pull. I find myself kind of falling into the story of Peyton and JD um, getting to know each other more based um that is not on surface level and that they're getting to know each other on a deeper level as well as realizing that you know they wasted a lot of years bickering back and forth when they could just be you know making love and having fun. So the next book that I want to talk about is actually another feel-good romance and it's one that I really appreciated but my friends were just kind of thought that this one was kind of mediocre but I really liked it. This one's called Evie Drake Starts Over by Linda Holmes and now this book follows two characters named Evie and also Dean and basically Evie is a recent widow her husband died and then um, she decides to go to this place in Maine kind of like a summer house kind of situation and she guys wants to just break away from society and break away from her friendships and her family members and just to try to cope with the loss of her husband. While Dean is a very famous baseball player who has recently been suffering this condition where he can't throw his ball straight anymore. It could be psychological, it could be something deeper, he doesn't really know and the doctors don't know as well but he's kind of torn up about it because his entire life was baseball and then now he can't play. So when they kind of live beside each other but behind each other in their house, like their houses are behind each other, they kind of form a friendship that matures deeper into a romantic relationship but they have a rule where they don't talk about their past and they don't ask any questions towards their past. I found this one to be more lighthearted than I expected and I felt that the romance between them was very natural and it blossomed very easily. It was definitely a very feel-good romance so if you're looking for something like that definitely check this one out. So one of the last books that I want to talk about is actually a book that sucked me right in and that surprised me that I would like it so much mostly because I knew it was going to be cute but I just didn't have high hopes for it. This one's called You Lucky Dog by Juliet London and now this one falls two characters named Carly and Max and Carly and Max are complete opposites of each other. Carly's really into fashion. She works in fashion and she's actually a PR specialist for designers and she just knows all her brand names. She knows how to express herself uh, through her clothes and she knows how to express herself through her looks and her outer appearances and things like that. She's also curvier than a lot of girls so she deals with a lot of self-esteem issues that is riddled by her family members and things like that but she's still able to be a professional person who owns her own PR business. Meanwhile, Max is actually a professor. I think he's like a scientist for the brain. So he's a neuroscientist and he studies the brain and all its functionalities and he's an academic. Um, he's definitely different from Carly and they are complete opposites attract. What happens is that they both have these two similar looking dogs and they have a dog walker. The dog walker accidentally mixes up the dogs and then now they kind of are stuck with each other's dogs and then they meet by meeting up and exchanging the dogs. And then this is is kind of how they form a friendship and then they kind of uh, grow into this relationship where they're kind of obsessed with each other and they just really like each other a lot for their personalities and for how real and true they are. Max actually has a younger brother who has um, a 
a disability or like a syndrome. I forget what syndrome he has, but Max is very persistent in studying about the brain because he wants to learn more about his younger brother's condition. And I thought that that was very heartbreaking and it was very sweet. So I definitely recommend you to check out this romance. I do have to give a warning that in the end or like close to the end of this book, it has this weird twist to it. And it could be off-putting if you're not into it. And honestly, I thought it was whack. Like I thought it was crazy. Like I was like, why is this even here? And things like that. But if I were to just really ignore that tiny blip, that blip, I would really like this book. And I still do. So that's why I'm still recommending it to you as one of my favorite romances. But anyways, that is it for all my favorite romances that I read this year in 2020. Definitely go check out these books if you guys are interested in the plot lines and let me know some of your favorite contemporary romance novels that you've read this year because I'm sure I probably didn't read them too. But until next time, I'll see you guys again with another favorites video. Bye.